May. Um, I do have a, um, a wee statement to read, uh, read out, right, first of all, um, uh, and that is, as members are aware, we are currently in the pre-election period, right, of the forthcoming Scottish Parliament elections on the 6th of May. You, right, you've all received a copy of Angus Council's pre-election guidance. Section 5 of the guidance covers publicity, which includes online council or committee meetings, which are webcast or subsequently published by the council. We need as members to be aware of the legal requirement not to publish anything which appears to be designed to affect political support for a political party. The legislation makes it clear that the timing and circumstances of publicity is a key factor in deciding if it is politically par right, partial, which is why there is greater sensitivity during the pre-election period. The key test is whether a particular act can be perceived as seeking to influence public opinion or to promote the public image of a particular candidate or a group of candidates, whether or not they are existing members. A common sense approach is required, and I would remind members simply to be mindful of this in their discussion and debate today. I'll move on to apologies and substitutes. No apologies, convener. Thank you. Declarations of interest. I'll take that silence as there are no declaration, right, declarations of interest and minutes. Uh, one, the previous meeting, submit for approval as a correct record, the minute of the meeting of the committee of the 9th of March. Again, I, I couldn't get my, my mute on mute off, in, off in time. Uh, I should possibly declare on, on the exempt item with the, uh, my... Uh, uh, place on the uh, Angus Health and Social Care Partnership. That's uh, the number nine. Okay, number two is the Central uh, Consultative Committee submit for information in the minute of the meeting of the Central Consultative Committee on the 4th of March 2021. Agreed. Again, I'll take a silence that that's agreed. Agreed. Thank you. And we will move on to business. Uh, is agenda item four uh, is the capital monitoring, the general fund and capital pro right, program 2020-21. Um, you do have the recommendations in front of you. It is um, the Ian, Ian Lorimer, who I understand is going to give a, a, a comment on right, to the committee regarding that. And can I also thank Don Johnson for her work on that report. Ian, do you want to come in on this one? Thank you, convener. Yeah, just just a couple of points to to, to make from the from the report. The report doesn't uh, have the final position yet. Uh, the numbers in this report are based on um, actuals to the end of February and a projection for uh, for March. It's not quite the final position, although we are working on that as part of our <coughs> our annual accounts. Um, what I wanted to flag really for members was the, the report shows quite quite large underspends against uh, the, the, the budgets um, on our capital programme, uh, both on a gross um, and a net basis, so something like 33% on the gross programme and 41% on the, on the net programme. And, and although we would expect an element of, of, of slippage of underspend on our, our capital programme each year, the levels this year are well beyond the norm. Um, and I think it's really just worth flagging to the committee the disruption uh, to the delivery of our capital plan that's come about from the, from the, the COVID-19 um, pan pandemic. It's been significant in terms of uh, delivery of, of the capital programme uh, for what is effectively, effectively now last financial year. Some of those effects have been direct because we've had periods of lockdown or restricted working. Some of those effects have been indirect, you know, where it's affected the supply chain. 
and some of those those effects have been indirect where there's there's been an impact on you know availability of staff to deliver projects etc so over and above that we've we've also had periods where the weather has made delivery of the capital program uh, difficult and you'll see from the report there's a few areas where vacancies in, in staff have, have have had an effect and some of those have proved uh, difficult to uh, to fill so um yeah, there's, it was really just a flag at the, at the outset, the, the impact. It's a very unusual year um, for uh, on, on our capital programme, um, and it was really just to, to flag that to, to, to members. We will be doing a, a revision and update to the 21-22 capital budget that was set back in March. In light of where we end up at the end of last financial year, um, and that comes to uh, this committee um, in uh, August for, for approval to those, to those updated positions on the 21-22 uh, budget. So hopefully that introduction is helpful, um, Camille, just as a, a bit of background to um, what are a, a pretty unusual set of numbers this year, I would say, in terms of where we're, where we're heading as far as spend is concerned. Thank you. Right, right, thanks, Mr. Lorimer. I, uh, I was going to go to quick uh, to uh, quick like uh, questions first. Um, uh, I know, right, I noticed there are a number of uh, right, hands up. Right, uh, so if it's not a question, if you, right, if you could please take it down. But uh, right, so I've got Councillor Duff. Question, Councillor Duff. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, convener. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of the, the slippage, I think obviously we, we know that COVID is something that we can't do anything about. Um, I, I just wondered about the, the, the staff shortages, which have been a sort of persistent issue for some time. Um, where are we in terms of trying to rectify that? And I guess the corollary would be is there any chance that we could catch up on what we've slipped? I, I, I rather suspect not because we've lost so much time, but just to be a, a interesting to get a view on that. Okay, perhaps an officer can help me here. Is that Ian? Right, would I come back to you? Uh, thank, thank you, Convener. Probably Mr. Crockford would be better copy, uh, commenting on this one than, than I, because I think um, both in terms of the roads uh, service and the property service, uh, those have been significantly impacted by by vacancies, and I know that's something that Ian and his team are working on. Yeah, right, thank you. Mr. Coffin, can you help here? Th thanks, convener. Yes, certainly, and, and thanks, Councillor Duff, for the question. Um, I, I think, as Mr. Larum has already pointed out, uh, we, we had, obviously, the COVID situation in the first place, um, and uh, whilst most of the service was able to, to resume work once we'd moved down up to the offices, uh, there were certainly certain parts of it, the service that struggled with that. Um, and then, of course, we got hit with uh, the winter weather uh, when we were absolutely hoping we could catch up. Uh, we certainly have some vacancies, which we are looking to recruit. Uh, uh, the, the market's quite challenging with that, within that um, in, in terms of uh, uh, Angus Council's position. And uh, we tend to lose staff now and again to, to other organisations as well. So it is a continually moving uh, situation. Uh, but we uh, we will endeavour, as I say, to recruit, and we are looking at uh, how we can spend uh, the the carry over the money uh, and indeed uh, this year's budgets as we as we move forward. Thanks, Mr. Cochran. Does that help, Councillor Duff? Yeah, thank you. Thank, thanks, Convener. Okay, Councillor Whiteside, question. Thanks, Convener. Um, my questions around the um, table three, the funding. Um, obviously, it's no surprise we've not been able to carry out the, the expected amount of works this year. Um, given the fact that we haven't had to draw down any new borrowing, um, one, I'm, like Councillor Duff, I'm concerned about the capacity to catch up and um, have the correct amount of investment in Angus infrastructure. But also, I'm wondering, given that there's been a bit of a trend over the last few years of not um, requiring the amount of planned borrowing that we've um, anticipated as future affordability calculations will that take that into account to ensure that we get the correct level of investment in in angus okay now well it seems like financial to me right um mr lorimer i can see you i right, have a wee wry smile on your face could you maybe help here uh, no, no wry smile for me Karina, but it is, it is a question that's best directed to me thank you 
Um, yeah, yeah. So we, we update our, our affordability calculations uh, each each and every year, um, and we take into account what our what our best estimates of, of borrowing etc. Will, will will be. Um, the, there's a, there's a little bit of a disconnect between um, the how could I put this the, the borrowing per our capital program is versus our borrowing from the external market. So we we borrow internally through the loans fund. Uh, for our capital program, um, and the timing of that is, depends on the spend. Um, but we also have decisions to make about when we secure the the external. Uh, I'll call it the real cash <laughs> from uh, from the external market or from uh, from the public works uh, loans board. Um, so we would we would time those things in accordance with uh, the, the the kind of market conditions. Now at scrutiny and audit, I think it was last week we had the the annual treasury management um, strategy statement that was that was up. And what we were basically saying within there was we will we will try and time our external borrowing uh, to to you know to get get any new debt that we need at the right time. We've been playing a bit of a waiting game on that because our capital program has been slipping. So um, essentially, we, we we're managing the the impacts of when we time those borrowing so that we don't borrow it um, before we really need it. And that allows us to control the interest costs uh, associated with that, and by by uh, by dint of that, able to then manage the affordability position. So it is something. It's really a part and parcel of our treasury management arrangements, um, and we will we update our, our affordability calculations into the future uh, each and every year as part of our, our budget setting. So hopefully that that answers the question, Councillor Whiteside. But, but please come back if not. Hopefully it does, Councillor Whiteside. Thank you. Okay, I'll go to Councillor Devine. Yeah, thanks, convener. I'm a wee bit like a, a broken record with this one. It's on page 13 and it's about the Ristenith landfill site. Uh, we're still waiting for the signing off of the agreement in this. And I don't think COVID or uh, weather has got anything to do with that. I just wondered if there is some kind of time scale for this because it has been hanging around a long time. Thank you. I think I'll go back to Councillor, uh, to Councillor, uh, Mr. Cochran. <laughs> uh, thank you, convener. Um, I'm afraid I, I, I don't have the details. It would have been Mr. Ball. Um, and uh, I'm afraid I don't have the details. But sorry, sorry, convener. I will, uh, will try and, uh, uh, get them for Councillor Devine, if that's okay, and I'll pick that up separately with you. That's yep. super. Right, thank you. Is that, is that thank okay, Councillor Devine? Yes, yes. You can't have everything at the, your fingertips. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Sturrock? Uh, thank you, Convener. Um, my question relates to uh, Section 5.3, Table 4, Project Number 1, Montrose South Regeneration. I see the commentary says that we are awaiting date for Lands Tribunal to determine compensation payments. Now, this seems to have been going on for a while. Is there no sort of further update rather than we're just awaiting? No realistic timescale in view. Okay, now to, who can I go back to on that one? It would be, that would be back to you, Mr. Cochrane. Uh Councillor Fairweather, uh, convener, I'm very happy to pick that one up. Uh, thanks, Councillor Sturrock, for your question. And yes, it is one that's been going on for a number of years now. And, and we have flagged that as a potential. Uh, we, we've not received claims coming through as yet um, on that. So that might be a saving that we can bring forward in due course. But we felt that at this point in time, uh, to, to just give that length of time for business to, to bring things forward that we wanted to, to continue to be able to do that. So I, I think you're still in active engagement with those who may seek compensation? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I think that's it. Right. Any further questions? No further questions. Any comments? Uh, Councillor McMillan Douglas.
Councillor McMillan Douglas, you'll be on mute. I am on mute. I'm not on mute now, there, convener. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to draw attention to the fact that it's important to get this capital programme back on track, not only because we need the projects that uh, the money is aimed at, um, but also it all fits in with our um, economic recovery programme post-COVID. And we had a very constructive last uh, meeting with officers um, last week, uh, looking at the ways that this could be done. And I just wanted to record that meeting had taken place. And also that um, um, officers, particularly um, Ian Cochran and Ian Lorimer, were being extremely constructive in trying to find ways of bringing this forward so that we caught up on our programme. Thank you, convener. Right, thank you. Uh, thanks, McMillan Douglas. Um, okay, any further comments? No further comments. Okay, we've got the recommendations. The recommendations of one, 1. 1.1, 1 .1, reviews and scrutinises. Uh, is the report agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Right, okay, we'll move on to uh, item number five. Uh, and that's the Revenue Monitoring 2020-21 and Renewal and Repair Fund, position at 2020-21. Uh, again, by Ian Lorimer and ably helped by Jill Rennie. Thank, 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 thank you, right, Jill Rennie. And um, we've got the recommendations. Are there any questions? Councillor Whiteside. Thank you, convener. Um, my question was around the HRA expenditure for repairs and maintenance. Um, again, not surprising at all that there's been an, an underspend, but it's quite a significant underspend. So my question's around the capacity to recover and get the, the outstanding repairs done to avoid the voids and to let people get moved into their houses. And also the, the tenants in the houses where repairs haven't happened, that's obviously um, having an adverse effect on them. So it's just a little bit of information around the capacity, basically. And also, will the, will the funding be carried forward into next year? Because I don't, I don't think it mentions that on the table. OK, right, right thanks for that, Councillor Whiteside. Um, who will I leave that to? Will it be um, Mr Lorimer or Mr Cochran? I'm happy to go first, um, convener, if that, that's okay. Just just in terms of the the fund the funding, what what will happen with that underspend is it will it will um, add to the to the housing revenue account balance at the end of last financial year, and would therefore be available to be drawn down into into the, the current the current financial year. Uh, now, the, the the capacity to to catch up, um, and, and Mr. Cochran probably wants to come in on this. That that was part of the discussion that we had last week, um, as Councillor McMillan Douglas has just uh, mentioned. Um, and uh, we are in uh, discussions with contractors about um, uh, trying to uh, you know accelerate some of the some of the programmes there to do a bit of catching up. I think there has to be a degree of realism about how far we'll be able to to, to take that. But it is uh, is acknowledged that there is a you know, there is a, a backlog of work that we would like to try and catch up as quickly as we can. But uh, as I say, Mr. Cochran might want to, to add a little bit more to, to what I've said there. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, convener, and, and thanks to Mr. Lorimer for his answer. Um, and thank you, Councillor Whiteside. Um, as you know, Councillor Whiteside, we were actually only allowed into people's premises uh, as of last Monday, um, uh, so the 26th of April. Um, so we will actually have a, a, a first month of this year is already gone. Um, we are minded that there's a backlog of, of repairs. Um, some of those repairs we believe have, have, have been managed differently. So either the householder themselves have managed to fix something or indeed perhaps have had uh, people, uh, relatives or otherwise who, who've managed to help out. So we are... Um, now dealing with that, uh, the remaining backlog, um, and we have a, a new contract which came into into force on the first of April. So we're utilising the new contractors to 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 get through uh, the work as we as we can, um, and we'll be utilising their their resources to catch up as much as much as we can. So um, it will be a challenge. Um, we're we're absolutely up for that challenge uh, to move forward, and and uh, hopefully. Uh, bring uh, residents' homes back up to standard and catch up with the voids as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Does that help, Councillor Whiteside? Yep, yep. Okay, any any further questions? Uh, I'll take that as a no. Um, any, any comments? Okay, I'll take that silence right, right as a no as well. Okay, we've got the recommendation uh, is one, reviews and scrutinises, and two, notes. Is the report agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. We'll move to number six, uh, and that's the change program update. update. Uh, again, the report is by uh, Ian Lorimer, um, ably uh, helped, and, right, and, I th right, and I thank him. Got right, Gordon Kergill. Um, uh, can I, right, you've got the recommendations. Are there any comments? Okay, no, no, beg your pardon. I should have asked, is there any questions? Any questions? No. Any comments? No. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll just go to the recommendations. Is one is consider the pro uh, the progress update and two agree agree the update. Is the report agreed? Agreed. agreed. Thank you very much. Item seven is the qualities mainstream uh, mainstreaming re re report. Um, uh, is by Sharon Faulkner, um, uh, and I'd like to give a big thanks to, right, to Doreen Phillips, remembering, of course, colleagues, that uh, uh, Do right, Doreen is one person putting all, the, right, all this together, um, and, I, and, I, right, and I would certainly understand if others may wish to, right, to, right, to have their input into this. Uh, I, and, right, I know there will probably be right, uh, a number of comments on this, so I will ask for right, uh, uh, quick right, questions first. Councillor Devine. Uh, thanks, Convener. Um, I would also like to thank um, Doreen for the huge amount of work she's done on this very, very important uh, report. But it is so important that we would like to propose deferral to enable a briefing. Uh, uh, just and, and bring it forward either to the full, uh, for sorry, to PNR in June or to a special PNR because we just think this is such an important thing that we need to discuss fully. Right, right. Thank you for that, Councillor Devine. Um, uh, there may be a deadline on this. Um, can, right, can, sh right, Sharon. Can, right, could you come in on this one? Right, regarding the uh, the question that. Councillor Devine has asked. Yes, certainly. Um, thank you, Convener. Thank you, um, Councillor Devine, for the question. Um, we were um, due to publish this information by the 28th of April, which is why we targeted this PNR committee, because that was the closest date to that. Um, I think, you know, you are, um, the reason you're asking for deferral is to allow us to raise awareness and scrutiny um, by members of this really important information. So, I think that would certainly justify any delay in publishing our mainstreaming report. So um, if, if that was um, a member's wish, I'd be happy to arrange a briefing with myself and uh, Ms. Phillips, our committee's officer. Okay, right. Thank you for that. Councillor Devine, I think that answers right, your, right, your question. But yeah. right, there's yeah. right, a couple other questions come in as well. Um, uh, I've got Councillor Laurie. Yep, thanks, Convener. I've just got a comment and two questions. Well, this was certainly a, a no, mammoth no, report. No, 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 no comments. Questions only, please, Mr. Laurie, at the well, moment. It's all, it's all kind of related. It's kind of a preamble. Into yeah, two yeah, on you go. Okay, thanks, Convener. Um, well, this was a really interesting report, and it covers a huge breadth of things, so I'm, I'm really appreciative for it, and it was a really, really interesting read. I'm just going to focus on page 96 and the race section. Um, I was really pleased when the Black Lives Matter motion passed last June. It was really encouraging to see the further work done alongside Daniela Dante, MSYP as well. Um, she's a really smart girl and I'm really glad that we're utilising what she brings to the table. Um, I'm glad to read that there's no statues in Angus celebrating slave owners. Um, but my first question is, have we made any progress on investigating the street names? Uh, secondly, I know that the Scottish Youth Parliament elections are soon and that Daniela's time as one of our MSYPs is limited. Um, so I was just wondering, are there any plans to continue this sort of racial equality work 
um, beyond the Scottish Youth Parliament elections, specifically in the uh, Black Lives Matter context. Um, Daniela gave us a lot of food for thought in her deputation uh, last year, and I'm really keen that we keep her foot on the gas, even when she's no longer our MSYP. Totally agree with you, right, uh, uh, Councillor Laurie. Can uh, one of the officers perhaps um, come back with a, a comment on that, please? Um, yeah, convener, if I could um, come in there. Um, the the issue about the street names, um, the Ian Cochrane was able to provide uh, Daniela with, uh, well, his team uh, was able to provide a, a list of all the street names apart from the unadopted ones. Um, and she had said that that was going to be like a piece of research on its own because you can imagine there are so many uh, street names and she they would have to like cross reference that with um, people that they knew had been involved in the slave trade and they were really the kind of the best people to do that. I haven't heard anything further um, about that because as I say it, it, she said it was going to be a, a big piece of work and would take someone to do that research into that. Um, in terms of um, plans to continue. Um, there hasn't been anything specific as such, but we have responded to, there was an inquiry that was made at the beginning of the year um, from um, Jamie Hepburn uh, from Scottish Government about um, skills and employment and specifically in relation to increasing numbers in terms of um, uh, ethnic uh, minority people being employed in the council but there was nothing more specific in terms of what you're talking about um, Black Lives Matters but in terms of race generally as I say the employment and skills part that's all been built into um, the workforce development plan and um, there's also mention in the equality outcomes um, about that. Thank you for that. Pierre, can I ask for a point of clarification? Yeah. Yes, I thought, I thought you were going to be deferring this report. I can't understand why we're debating it just now. Yeah, we're debating. I'm only asking questions, right, Councillor. Right, Councillor. So, is it going to be deferred or or not? Um, right, uh, right. I've still to make that decision, Councillor Vaughan. Okay. But convener, I mean, the idea of having the deferral is to have a briefing where questions can be asked, and we can uh, discuss it. You know. Um, that's okay. I, I, yeah. I would. Right, I was just being right, polite to write to the people who put their hands up. Um, right, do you want me to uh, ignore count? Right, there's one more hand up, uh, and that was Councillor Hands. Uh, I have no wish to uh, ignore Councillor Councillor Hands. I will then move. Um, right, to my my decision, Councillor Hands. Councillor Fairweather is actually trying to take my hand down, so I'm quite happy for the um, briefing to take place. Okay, right, thank you for that, Councillor Hans. Um, okay, right, right, uh, having listened to right, everything that has been said, uh, and yes, it is important that all members do get to, right, to, right, to consider this, uh, is, my, right, is my belief, so I thank Councillor Devine for that. Um, uh, so I will move uh, to, right, to defer this to the next PNR uh, in in June. Uh, is that agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Thank you. We'll Convener. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Thank you. Convener, could we just clarify that as part of the deferral that there will be a briefing arranged prior to the next PNR committee as part of of the reason or justification for deferral. Yes, please. Thank you, Kibir. Okay, thank you very much. Number eight is the possible exclusion of public and press. Um, uh, is that agreed? Agreed. 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 And we'll move to the next part of the meeting. Thank you. Thanks.